Welcome everybody in the Movie Guys Verse. This is Jordan here, part of Movie Guys Podcast. We wanted to say thank you so much for downloading this most recent episode. If you don't know what Movie Guys Podcast is, we are a new movie review show that is updated weekly. You can check us out at movieguyspodcast.com and also movieguyspodcast.podbean.com. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another awesome episode of Movie Guys Podcast. And tonight we're talking about Super Mario Brothers, starring Mario, Luigi, King Koopa. Wait, 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 Jordan, Jordan, what are we, what are we doing? What we're not doing, Super Mario Brothers? I don't think. I don't think we are. Did I, did I watch the wrong movie? Yeah. What are we supposed to watch? Tank Girl. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're literally the same movie, just with a badass chick in the. Oh. Opening. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I see what you were trying to do with that. Yeah, you uh, yeah. took me long for the yeah. right there. I Okay, well, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. I can yeah. see why you would say that. Yeah, well, tonight with that little skit here, we are talking about Tank Girl, a 1995 box office bomb that has now become a cult classic and a huge following, and I'm really excited to talk about this one because – the badass chick, and um, let's let's talk about her. But uh, I'm Jordan. I'm joined here, like always, with Eric and Ed. Eric, how are you doing today, buddy? You know, you say Mario. I'm going to go ahead and say like a 90s Deadpool. I'm good. How are you, Ed? Listen up, because I'm only going to tell you this once, and I'm not a bedtime story kind of lady. All right? Oh. So, nice. yeah. So, listen. I, this is not Super Mario Brothers. I don't give a fuck what, you, what either of you guys say. No. No, we're not saying it's Super Mario Brothers. I know, I'm just, I know, I know. Feel. The junk. <laughs> I yeah, get it. Yeah. I get it. You guys know that not only am I a sucker for cornrows and manicured toes, I'm a sucker for comic book movies, the ones that lift literally the story off of the comics and right onto the screen. And well, you know, we'll get into it in, de- in detail, but I feel like that's what we got here, guys. Well, now, the reason why we're started with Tank Girls because this is kicking off part one of two of our Badass Chick series, all leading up here to Captain Marvel next week. And the reason why we're doing Tank Girls for two reasons, fans. One, there's not a lot of superhero fil- uh, girl movies out there. We got Wonder Woman, and we got Supergirl, Supergirl, which, you know, so Tank Girl would be something fun for us to do. And also, I saw this movie in 1997. And uh, it brought back memories when I watched this one. So uh, I thought this would be something to kind of kick off to where the female superhero genre uh, came from. So that's kind of my history with this. Eric, do you have a history with this? Have you seen this? You, you, know, you know what? Okay, so no joke. At, when you had messaged us and said that, hey, guys, we're in it, we should do Tank Girl and, and this whole thing, and we agreed to it. I'm not even kidding, like, the next day. I don't have cable. I don't have cable. I just have antenna, okay, just because I'm, you know, I don't pay for don't pay for cable. It was on, basic. It was on antenna Tank Girl was, on the movies channel. And I was like, well, I, I will be goddamn. And it's just like, well, perfect timing. Sat down and watched that, and then I had to rewatch it uh, again just to make sure I didn't, because, you know, they might censor stuff, but no, there's commercial breaks. So yeah, sure. And I wanted to see it in, in its Blu-ray entirety. So that was uh, that was something. Uh, uh, what was the question? Badass Supergirls? Is that what it is? Well, I was just saying, have you ever seen it before? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, no, not I wasn't. I don't think I was allowed to see this type of movie when I was when I was kid. Or like my mom would be like, "No, you don't need to see that type of thing." Not that I wasn't allowed to, because I think when it came out, when I was like maybe ten, yeah, somewhere around there. But um, but did you see it? Okay, okay, okay. No, so you no not not, it, not you... front to back. Never, never front to back. It's it, this but was a, a movie that, that was always just in in clips for me. Whether it be oh, you've on, heard of on, it then? Oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah, for for sure. I don't, I don't know how I had. Maybe just because it was just pop culture. This movie is very nineties. Very nineties. It is, it is very, very, very nineties. That's it's not a bad thing. It's no. Very Ed, how about you? Have you ever heard or have you seen Tank Girl before this review tonight? No, I and I have to say that I'm embarrassed that I I, I didn't see this movie before uh, we decided to talk about it. <clears throat> and I'm a huge fan of Lori Petty. You know, she's she's part of the movie guys verse. So I'm 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 excited that I got to finally watch this movie. 
And, you know, um, I have to say that I was embarrassed that I hadn't heard of it before you decided to talk about it. Now, let's talk about Lori, Lori Petty first before we get into the uh, nuts and bolts of the film. No, no, no. First right. question, I'm going to interrupt you. First movie that comes to mind when you see her. Oh, well, that's what I was going to just say. Oh. Um, sorry, I mean to cut you off. But... Yeah, no. I was born in 87. I'm 32 now in 2019. So my first um, introduction to Lori Petty was uh, the short hair uh, Shamu whale trainer in Free Willy. There you go, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And, of course, who didn't want to be that kid, you know, who was awesome with the whale? So that's what my first introduction to her <laughs> was. That's what it was, Eric. How about you? She has actually, no joke, Lori, I hope you're listening, has skipped, I mean, not, not skipped over, but like skipped through like stones throughout different parts of my life, throughout different parts, whether it be a league of their mm-hmm. own, fucking awesome, by the way. We already, I don't need to, need to say that. Everyone already knows that movie is, is legit, right? But um, mm-hmm. In the Army Now also is a big one for me, too. I, I just she really, was in an Army Now, yeah. yeah. So like her, I and I liked short hair Polly Shore at that time, and David Allen Greer is as a goddamn gem, too, right? <laughs> So, um, but as looking at her IMDb, it's like she did Tank Girl after uh, all of that too. So she's already been well established in my heart before uh, all this. And then I, this Tank Girl's a fun movie. It 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 really is. We'll talk about it more. Aside from it being me saying it's very '90s, but I do consider this to be kind of like almost like a Deadpool, a character who's just kind of told to have fun with it. Yeah. What do you, Ed? When did you first see Laurie Petty? Well, obviously, League of the Road. Um, a League you. of Their Own is is a fantastic movie, one of the greatest movies of all time, and it is, quite frankly, it is one of my favorite badass chick flicks. Yeah, I have to say. Obviously, you know, I love Orange Is the New Black. I think it is a fantastic show, and I think it's incredibly well done. Uh, so she's probably more recognizable from from there. But let me let's just go down the list of people that were also in this movie. Yes, I was going to say that next. Thank you for reading my mind because, my God. So I have not seen this movie. It came out in 95. I've not seen this until uh, until 97. So I turned it on. My wife was watching it with me. And, Ed, go ahead. Go up the list here. When we when we press play, it, it shows us the actors and actresses that's in this. And I'm doing a double take. My wife, like, what? <laughs> so it was funny because he hit pause right after the interdu- the, the beginning – you know, uh, credits, and he called me. Jordan called me, and he goes, Naomi Watts is in this movie? <laughs> Malcolm McDowell is in it? Ice-T is in this movie? Malcolm he McDowell would, was, a, was a pleasant one, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and, and uh, you know. Iggy fucking, Pop? I Iggy, Iggy, Pop in Iggy Pop is in this movie. You know, there, you know, uh, Richard Skiff is in this movie. I mean, there's so many people that you, that, you wouldn't necessarily associate with what this movie, money wise and critic critically wise, became. But I was super excited when I was watching it. I know Jordan was because he called me. That's yeah, no, I was. So like, I was like, "How many watch it. Um, So we would not be a traditional movie guy sh- podcast show without getting into the opening here of this. Is that this movie directed by uh, Rachel Talalay, which I'll talk about her in a second. The movie was made for twenty five million dollars. And it grows six in the box office. Only six million. Um, Rachel Talalay, do you guys know her work? I know her from the first female director to do Freddy's Dead, number six of uh, Freddy's Nightmare. Uh, well, Nightmare on Elm Street. She did that film. And uh, she, uh, I don't know what other stuff she has done. But anyway, um, interesting get for her. This is based off of the comic book Tank Girl, which was uh, which was a... a a, a British uh, comic book. It did not have a long run, um, but let's talk about it here. So in 2022, a comet strikes Earth, causing a drought that is still ongoing 10 years later in 2033. So Malcolm McDowell. <laughs> Malcolm McDowell. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> Malcolm McDowell is in charge of WP, uh, which Water is – so let's talk about this real quick before we get to the awesome performance of, of Lori Petty. Let's just skip a few scenes here. Uh, we introduced to Malcolm McDowell as this very, very 
traditional twirling the uh, uh, you know twirling the mustache villain here. Um, well, look, and yeah, it's all about Malcolm water. McDowell. He plays Malcolm Dowdle, but <laughs> but they're all standing there drinking water, and of course he's always given this one guy a sergeant, the stink guy. Because their job is they're supposed to clear out areas to get all the water. This is my first complaint with the movie. They definitely fucked up. Um, when they come up with this great, awesome idea, Eric and Ed, where Malcolm McDowell, Malcolm McDowell knocks the guy out, the guy who was the sergeant who screwed up, and he takes a plunger thing on the back of his neck, right. sucks some blood, and it starts taking all the water from him. Right. And yeah. the camera... The camera just pans to the right hand of the guy, and his hand started to like, sh- kind of like shrivel and shrink, turn to a raisin. That's right. They dropped the ball on that. I-, I wanted to see a little bit gore, like you know, like maybe the guy, maybe the guy rolls over on his back, and his face is like getting sucked. You know, kind of like how uh, uh, like last crusade. No, 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 kind of like kind of like last crusade. You're like you know when their faces are melting in uh, in Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, like I mean, really go up with the gore. <laughs> you know what I mean? They dropped the ball on this one. They should have gone the goal. That, you is guys that agree scene really it? no? Is that scene really necessary? Like it's yes, it's, Lucy. For this kind of movie, yes, this movie needs to be absolutely ridiculous. This movie yes, is ridiculous, we, and that that and, scene in itself is ridiculous. The gore doesn't need to be in in that part because it's already ridiculous. That that does that's not how it works. You know, like you have bone in in it's just there's nothing would be sucked out like that and be uh, – either way, there's no science behind it. But right. I've not seen like, a man get sucked. That's a weird I'm, move along, please. I, you, I mean, it, it does. It sets it sucks, It sucks. sets the tone for for how campy the movie's going to be. Let's just be frank. Thank you. It, it does. It really does set that tone. Um, but, again, I'm a sucker for things that are pulled straight off of the comic book uh, strip, and though I was I had not read the comics before this movie, and nor have I read them after watching the movie, I can imagine that being on a comic book. Yeah, you know, it it seems very comic book e. They they did this thing in this movie where they added a lot of animation to it, like whether it be well, basically they were cutscenes or or kind of um uh kind of little scenes that would really help. Just move almost like storyboard scenes, right? But mm-hmm. uh, um, obviously more detailed and more time spent on them, more animation. Uh, but they would help either just move the plot from point A to point B real quick, or set up something, or just be kind of descriptive, like a uh, the old Batman zap wow pow thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they it incorporated really well into this movie to make it very uh, well playful and and kind of like cartoony type of thing, like it, like a comic. I, I shouldn't even say cartoony; I should say like comic book style, you know? Sure. Um, it reminded me the style of them doing it, of a, a trend that seemed to be kind of in the movies around that time. So, like, uh, what were some movies? Um, cool World? Remember that one? With Brad Pitt? Yeah. yeah. And, like, yeah. Uh, Heavy Metal? Yeah. yeah all heavy Metal? Great heavy movie. Metal 2000. Yeah, so like uh, um, I know there's a, there's a few other ones that I, that I'm missing, but uh, that um, should should be brought to mind. But you know, or like uh, Felix the Cat, fucking you know, it's like some weird obscure '90s. Garfield, or you're gonna go Garfield next? No, no, I mean like a, the obscure weird '90s kind of anime that that was going around at this time where they were kind of I don't know, like this style. It, it just seemed uh, kind of pretty cool. So, well, let's talk about that real quick, Eric. You brought that up in the beginning of the show. How is Tank Girl, which I know it is, I'm just asking, how is Tank Girl so 90s, like you were saying? Uh, uh, a lot of it, it, well, okay, first off, a lot of the music, very it's very punk, you know? So very grungy. Very Gwen Stefani. Yeah, very grungy punk, and it's it's very empowering towards women. So there was kind of, there was that attitude in the 90s where it was like this punky badass brat chick, you know? Who's like, you know, fuck you, fuck the man, fuck the system. I got this on my own type of thing. And yeah. that's just really what it was. So the music was built around that too. Angry kind of rebellion music type of thing. A lot of her jokes were were kind of a, a lot of the uh, um, uh, <laughs> the fashion was, uh, yeah. was kind of like that too. I It was just kind of like that. Um, again, it 
it almost reminded me as if like it was a female Deadpool in the nineties. That's basically yeah. how I feel that character is. Tank Girl is is that she's just kind of like this live animation that just came to life. And you know, um, one of the things you know that kept sticking in my head. I didn't think Deadpool, but I'm glad you pointed it out. It makes more sense than what I was thinking. Was was Popeye? Okay. Popeye was one of those characters who just said the most brilliant and funny things under his breath. And if you if you watch the live action version with with Robin Williams, it's like, oh my god, like that, it's absolutely perfect. This is this is that to me. The, the, it's not un, it's not mumbled under her breath, but like the, the scene where she's in the tank chasing down the uh, the uh, the semi and she's cooking hot dogs. Yeah. That, that was that was the funniest thing. I laughed, and they and, and she made and the little girl made a made a dick joke about the other little the I don't say little girl. I don't know how old she was, but the teenage girl at the beginning scene or in the beginning when they're in the house, she makes a, a dick joke about uh, the, little, the boys. Uh, what you call a peanut a, a peanut dick or something yeah. like that? Like that. Was, this movie is absolutely hilarious. About a, it. Yeah, a lot of a lot of dick jokes in here. There's, Actually, one that I remember laughing at was there was a chase scene there. She was going to – she was in her tank chasing the semi soon after that hot dog scene, actually. Mm-hmm. And she rolled up next to him, hugging the barrel of the of the gun of the tank, and it was just like, a, do you guys feel inadequate yet? <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought yeah. she was surfing that tank. Uh, she was she was surfing the, the gun of the tank, uh, and then she had a Lazy Boy recliner on it, too. Mm-hmm. Like, it was this – I mean, Tank Girl, in a nutshell, is a movie that is water world reversed. There's no water, it's all desert, and the current scene everybody wants is water. And this is literally a badass superhero chick who has a tank, who decked it out, who drives around and kills the bad guys in her tank. But, um, so I told you guys my first displeasure with the movie I think you guys know me pretty well to know what my second displeasure with this movie is. Uh, what? Well, I mean, I, I could I could make a guess for a lot of, a lot of different things, but please go go ahead. The obvious one here: the mutant kangaroos. Okay, I actually yeah. was gonna. Uh, uh, that's pretty bad. On the list, that's, it wasn't gonna be the first one. Well, what what, what about them? Cool. Oh, first of all, the makeup was just not that good. Uh, the tails. The 90s. It was fantastic okay, okay, in the okay, 90s. Okay, so. No. It, was also, it was better than King Koopa's fucking makeup that you were joking about earlier. Yeah, when, when did that movie? Uh, Mario, Mario Mario came out in 93. No, right around this time. No, Warriors of Virtue, 97. Warriors of Virtue was 97? Yeah. You guys remember that movie? Yeah, I do. We, we that, talked, was, we, that was a bad movie. You want to talk about bad movies. But sorry, sorry for everyone. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Sorry. But I think the costumes, because they were basically, yeah, I'm looking at the pictures right now. These are basically the same pictures. These are these are exact same uh, masks, same costumes, everything, except the Warriors of Virtue have a bit more of a snout. But, yeah, these, these are goddamn mutant kangaroos, man. Well, in our archives, we talked about Spawn. And I would rather have seen what we saw in Tank Girl than the generic video game-like pretend graphics that we saw in, in Spawn. Sure. So it made more sense to me than than that did. So, I mean, uh, was the concept dumb? Yeah, but that's not the movie's fault. That's the that's the source material's fault. No, no, I'm not... I'm not I am not bashing on the concept of mutant kangaroos. Don't worry. I, I can't believe I'm saying that mutant kangaroos is fine in my book. It's just I'm not a fan of the makeup and... You know, and then they, and they're also dogs because Naomi Watts is in this movie, and she allows one of them to literally hump her while they're dancing in celebration. <laughs> she doesn't and, allow it to hump her. She's like standing there awkwardly. Yeah, but she doesn't stop it. And the well, actor, the guy who's playing the, uh, you know, the rapey kangaroo there, just is going. They're, 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 rip, they're called rippers, first off. Yeah, oh, rippers, rippers. And then all of a sudden, I hear this voice out of one of the kangaroos, and I'm like, I've heard this before. Is that from New Jack City? Dude. Wait a minute. Who is this? Oh, my God. This is Ice-T. Did you not see Ice-T. the opening credits? Oh. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm like, I'm like, where's Ice-T? Is Ice-T coming in at the end? 
Is he going to be a sidekick? <laughs> I don't know. When I started this movie, uh, I did not know that we were going to get mutant kangaroo dogs that hump Naomi Watt. <laughs> I did not expect it. And Lori Petty was twerking on one. She could do all she wants. She was She's amazing. Down. I love Lori Petty in this movie. I love her costume. I love her attitude. She's great. I love Lori Petty. She's not the problem. She's what makes this movie. But I just said a sentence that I never thought I would say, a mutant kangaroo dog humping Naomi Watts. It's just that's, that what? That's not the weirdest thing to come out of the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we all know that. Like It just seems like it's a standard, actually. Wow. <laughs> You know, and then their tails were kind of like, and their tails were pretty much metaphors for dicks. I'm just like, oh, God. Like, it's just a bad makeup. Just, I mean, uh, what we were watching last night, I go, so this is like Turtles 3, like really terrible. Like, Remember, like, this was like an age, though, again, like the, the late 80s to, to mid 90s, there was this age where like the whole prosthetic full body costume was the thing. Like, yeah. a lot of movies were doing it, you know, and it was yeah. based around the show. So whether it be, like, Turtles or Aventos in Dino City were a big one, too, yeah. uh, or Dinosaurs, a TV show. Like, the full-body prosthetics were just in. They just, every like, a lot of movies had, a lot of kids' movies, I should say, or family movies had them. And uh, then they get into, like, something more, is this PG-13? There's R, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, like, the R, the R rated, because you get into, yeah. to, um... Like critters and shit, where you had these, you know, prosthetics used in that, where it's all puppets. So that's a big part of puppets. Uh, I mean, we're we're in that '90s. So that's awesome. don't hate on it. Like, you know, I appreciate it rather than it being the, the shitty CGI that Ed was talking about, and because that that looked real bad. That does not. Yeah. This at least, I guess, dates better than the than that does, right? I really need to smoke a lot of pot to watch this movie. I did, um, and it was enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> um, one praise I'll give this movie besides Lori Petty's uh, wonderful acting in this. Uh, I actually will say that I just love the names of the people. Uh, her sidekick, Naomi, uh, Naomi Watts, plays Jet Girl. You know, I wish I actually got a chance to uh, to actually pick up the comics here and, and check them out because I want to know the universe. Like, how many blank girls are there's there? There's a oh, jet uh, girl. There's a scuba girl, and I, or sub girl. I'm sorry. Um, jet, plane, tank, and then there's one more. Right? Isn't there one more? Uh, well, Earth. Earth Girl? Earth Girl, maybe? Earth Girl, yeah. no, that's, that's incorrect. What the hell are you... Uh, well, you... Hold on, uh, Boat Girl. Uh, sub, <laughs> sub and Boat Girl. Sub Girl and Boat Girl. Which is pretty much the same thing. They both have water. Well, one goes on top and one doesn't. One goes okay, down. Okay, that's what she said. Nice. Um, so, so you got Tank Girl, you got Jet Girl, you got Sub Girl, and you got Boat Girl. There you go. We got to make the sequel, and they need to have their own Avengers kind of team up to defeat the evil electric plant company guys. I don't know. The man. The man. Uncle Sam himself. Trump. Well, not back then. They need to have Becky Lynch, the true man, the man, come in uh, really- help out Tank Girl. You you you're merging call in the ring. Okay, I am um, merging call in the ring and oh, movie guys. Really movie guys hey, did you know that uh, the creator of Tank Girl also created uh, the band Gorillas? I did not. Blur. Uh, he's the, the band. Other, blur. He's the other half. He's not the woo hoo guy. He's, he's not. The other he's guy. not the Blur guy. He's the other guy. Really? So he's in. The, he's the lead singer of Gorillas. He's he's one half. Of gorillas, which one is he on the gorillas? He's not the main not, guy, is he? Not the blur guy. <laughs> George, well, I don't, it's, it's simple math, George. <laughs> well, his no, is, because uh, his name is uh, was it Jamie uh, Hewlett. Hewlett? Uh, yeah, yeah, Jamie Hewlett. No, like, um, like, okay, you're talking about gorillas, but every time when I see them, they always have the. Uh, there's always like a bunch of characters. You, know, you got the blue hair guy, you got the short Asian guy, you got the big yeah, black. Yeah, those guy. are the virtual characters. That's the virtual band, but the um, they're not real. 
I know they're not real, jackass. I'm and just saying. I, I, well, I, 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 hey, listen, I don't ever want to be the person to say that Santa Claus isn't real, and I'm sorry that I had to do that today. I'm sorry you had to find <laughs> out. Like this. Uh, through the live on a podcast, we got it live here. But, yeah, the other because guy, the blue guy plays the blue hair guy. Dame, anyway, Damon Albarn. I hope I said that correctly. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's he's the other half. Uh, looks like he did a lot of gorillas. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, back. Back. Hey, anyway, let's back to the back to tank girl, please. Thank you. So, um, but okay. So I'm not gonna get into the final reviews of this yet. But I mean, Tank Girl, Tank Girl was fun. Uh, it's just really no bullshit. What made me laugh throughout the whole time and have a good time was this was this Lori Petty because it brought me back to you know to to seeing her in Free Willy and shit when I was growing up. And that's why I opened the segment up today with Super Mario Brothers because Super Mario Brothers is a terrible freaking movie. Just terrible, god awful. <laughs> I'll still watch it because it's nostalgia. I saw that in theaters with my dad. So if Tank Girl was different, you know like if I saw Tank Girl in theaters with my dad instead of Super Mario Brothers, then maybe I would enjoy this more. But production not great. Malcolm McDowell was fun. Uh Tank Girl was fun. Just, ugh. It's just weird. It's just those goddamn kangaroos I had nightmares last night. Oh. That sucks for freak, you. Oh, it freaked me out. Makes sense. Makes sense, Jordan. All right, Ed, let's get into our popcorn ratings. Ed, what will be your popcorn rating for Tank Girl? So, again, I have not seen this movie nor heard anything about it until you brought it up uh, when we decided that we were going to do a badass chick series. Uh leading up to and including uh, Captain Marvel, which we will be doing next week. Um, but I'm giving us a large bag, boys. I mean, <laughs> hands down. Like, I get that the movie itself, like, maybe the movie as a movie wasn't the best and most well-done thing ever. But to me, a large bag of popcorn represents something that I really fucking loved watching. And I loved watching every aspect of this of this movie. I absolutely did. Like, I went into it knowing the reviews of it were awful, just god awful. Yep. And I knew that it bombed, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna watch it. Let me have a couple drinks. Let me get some chips. I'm just gonna watch it because I have to. And I absolutely <laughs> loved everything about the movie. No bullshit. I even love your mutant kangaroo dogs, the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> laugh at me all you want, boys, but I'm like, not laughing at you. I just can't believe you gave this movie. A I'm large giving bag. it a large bag of popcorn. You I, gave I us just, the highest I review we can Ellen, give a movie. I, I love you with Ellen. <laughs> I absolutely loved everything that you could love about this movie. Wow. Okay, so you gave Tank Girl. The highest review that we could give a movie. All right, all right, fair uh, enough. Fair no, enough. I mean, it's, it's not the highest. But I mean, we will. Yeah, we, we, we could jazz it up a little bit, right? Yes. yes. Fine, the golden popcorn, but still, I mean, large. I mean, we do small, medium, large. So, uh, okay, large bag of popcorn for Ed here on Tank Girl. Um, Eric, what is your popcorn rating for Tank Girl? Uh, just so you know, it says here in the trivia that a dick scene was cut out with Tank Girl and Booga. A 10-inch prosthetic cock, cock was cut out. It was a $5,000 cock. It looked brilliant, end quote. So I just want you to uh, know that. Ed, hold on, hold on, stop. Ed also, was taking a drink. And he choked on it when he was also, talking. Just want, you, just want to let you know that. Also, uh, uh, it, but to its saving grace, uh, much uh, to test the quality of movie in, in this era. James Hong's in this movie, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hardest working man in Hollywood. So uh, it's always good to see him as a crazy Asian uh, man, wizard, evil, sorcerer, shady character in an alley type of thing who's going to, in this case, deal, what, a, a glove? A, an actual forearm and hand? Yeah. Uh, Malcolm. Yeah. yeah, that's what happened. He reminded me of uh, the bad guy from Inspector Gadget. Yeah, Dr. Claw. Dr. Claw, all he needed was a kitty. So, uh, yeah. Listen, um, 
this this movie is I've not seen in the full sitting. I always see it in clips and in backgrounds. I think it's it's kind of maybe I don't know. It, it's definitely a, has a following, but this is a movie that should be enjoyed with a group of people and not you know maybe by yourself individually. <laughs> I'm just saying yeah, that, is, out of my opinion, I think it's a fun movie um, that is like a party movie. I guess it, 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 that's a new genre that we can put things in, right? Where yeah, there you go. You know, put it on the background, and it's just kind of because uh, this this movie moves very very quick. A lot happens. A lot happens in this movie, and um, sometimes you're just like, wait, wait a minute, where are they again? How how are they here? How is she? Why are they? Where, who are they? You know, it's a lot of those questions get asked, but it's it's pretty to look at. A lot of shit's going on, and uh, if it ain't moving, then it's blowing up. Yeah. So, that, and if it's new, neither of those, then it's telling a dick joke. So for that, I give it a I'll give it a small bag, but with like a lot with all the fixings on it, some extra fucking butter, it's salt, just because it's a party. You know, I'll throw some cannabis butter on that too. How about that? Oh, okay. <laughs> It is, legal. it is all legal in your state. It is all legal in your state. We're all good. It is. It is legal in my state, ladies and gentlemen, Michigan here. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get this a small bag of can of butter, uh, popcorn. Nice. Nice. Um, God, what can I say that I haven't already said before? I really did enjoy Lori Petty. She was definitely a female Deadpool. I don't think she um, was acting. No, no. I mean, like, there's an IMDb trivia that said that she's got the script and she didn't know what Tank Girl was, I guess. And when she saw the actual comic, she goes, well, this is me, clearly. She looks just like me. Um, I mean, like, everything that – she was never worried. She was never scared. You know, early in the movie where they, uh, where they put the straight jacket on her and they put it on the tube and Malcolm McDowell is like, the farther you go, the skinnier it's going to get. And she just makes some comment and she just goes down the tube and doesn't freak the fuck out. Like, I'll be freaking out. I would so, be freaking out too, yeah. Right? So I loved her in this movie. She makes the movie. Eric, you are right. You need to see this with a bunch of friends. Maybe when May the 4th happens, somebody should bring a copy. Uh, I mean, I just uh, this is something that you see in the theater with friends. This is something that people dress up as. This is a Rocky Horror Picture Show kind of a movie. This is not something to watch by yourself. So with that being said, yeah, um, because she's great in it, this is going to be a small bag. No extra butter, just, just a small bag of popcorn. Watch it for Lori Petty. So, it's before we... Movie, right? so, yeah. yeah. Be- before, uh, Jordan, before you jump in, I just want to let all the fans know that uh, Eric and I, we're, we're, we're pleased to announce we don't have an exact date yet, but we will be continuing from last year. Uh, Eric and I will be doing uh, the Game of Thrones reaction and recap Woo! episodes that we did from last year. Uh, they were extremely popular. The winner is here, and Movie Guys Podcast is here to help you cope with whatever we know is going to happen and make you extremely sad. Uh, so look for that uh, after the first episode airs. Uh, more details to come in the next few weeks, uh, but I just wanted to announce that uh, live on the air. So, All right, so before we end the episode here with Tank Girl, Eric and I have a question for you. Yeah. If they are going to, if they were to remake Tank Girl and Lori Petty is not in it. They're going to cast a new Tank Girl. Let's say this happens. Ed, I'll ask you first. Which, who, what actress would you hire for the role of Tank Girl? Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> if they, if, if Deadpool just did Tank Girl? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me that's something right there because he yeah. jumped from from because Tank Girl is with that's that's Titan Comics right that that's a completely yes. sub genre he could mm. oh please someone hear this Eric's excited <laughs> Eric's excited do you just I just see the because he would he'd have to wear a wig the entire time leg and stockings you know, you know fishnet entire. stockings on Deadpool. Okay, so Brian Reynolds is 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 is, is, is Ed's answer, I guess. Uh, Eric, do you have an answer? Who that would who tough. would be Tank Girl? That is really tough. Well, how about this? Let you think, and I'll give you mine. Um, my answer would be Gwen Stefani. 
So the curse of Hollywood would be that you need to be this young and kind of hot thing. And you got to have an ass and it's got to be young and that that's what Hollywood wants. As much as I would love to, to, to see where Louis Petty's tank girl is now, um, it depends on who makes the, the movie. I think she's still she still got it. I think she can still pull it off. Like she still has the attitude. That's yeah. But uh, if she can't, Miley well, I mean, Cyrus. It, it could be more. It could be more more joke and, and less sexual flaunt. But um, either way. But I mean, there was liquid silver. There was a fucking burlesque lounge in this movie. So yeah. I mean, so it's a, sexy is a part of a part of the thing. But if it needed to be a recast, I don't. I don't know, man. That's a tough fucking call. Um, I, Miley Cyrus, Gwen Stefani. Why is he got to be a mu- musician? Um, because if I look at Lori Petty as Tank Girl, and I look at Gwen Stefani with all of her costumes, Gwen Stefani looks like she would be a good Tank Girl, looks wise. She ain't no hollow back girl. There you go. And your pick uh, is bananas. B a n a n a s. Yeah, I just do go. type. Uh, is a rising stars. Is, can I just type this one in in IMDb? Maybe give us an idea. I don't. I don't it's hard, man. I really don't know yeah. who the hell. I don't know who any of these you, girls are. You really and truly cannot ca- recast uh, Lori Petty out of this out of this role. You just can't do it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah, just like just like you cannot recast John Leguizamo as Luigi. <laughs> Right, it's just you, that, that, okay. that's them. that is them 100%. Well, you never know, because you, you, okay. there's always a heat pleasure out there, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay, sure. well, we've gone on long enough here talking about Tank Girl. Everybody in the Movie Guys Verse, thank you so much for listening to this episode. We greatly appreciate it, like always. Make sure to check us out at movieguyspodcast.com and movieguyspodcast.podbean.com. On Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, just go ahead and search for us on those social media platforms. Search for Movie Guys Podcast and download this episode and many others. Go to MovieGuysPodcast.com, MovieGuysPodcast.Podme.com, iTunes. Uh, oh, wow. iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. I tongue-tied there. And you can make it sure to check out many episodes. Just check out Movie Guys Podcast. Thank you so much, Eric and Ed, for joining me. And we will continue with our badass chicks superhero films next week with Captain Marvel. Have a good night.